welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to show you how to make a 1950s circle skirt. Circle skirts are one of those things that are incredibly hard to find when you're first starting a vintage wardrobe. I think I've only ever actually bought one circle skirt and it was really awful so I've made all of the others. And most of the time, as with a lot of my clothing, I make them out of tablecloths. Actually, the pinafore I'm wearing right now is also made out of a tablecloth. Tablecloths, curtains, and sheets are a super great way to get fabric, particularly at the thrift store. You can get them for super cheap, and you can get a lot of yards of fabric out of them, so I'm going to be using this lovely PG pink tablecloth. Now let's get right into this. I'm going to start by showing you how to measure and cut out the pieces for your circle skirt. For a circle skirt, you only really need two measurements. The most important one is, of course, your waist, and the second measurement isn't super precise. You kind of get to choose what it is, and this is just the length of your skirt. For this, you can just hang your measuring tape from your waist and sort of guess how long you want it to be. The general rule for 1950s skirts is to make sure that they are absolutely completely covering your knees. So I think I'm gonna go with 26 inches and then add another inch for seam allowance, so 27 inches. So those are the only measurements that you need to take, but now there's a little bit of math. So a circle skirt is basically a giant circle with a hole in the middle for your waist. So to cut that really big circle, you're gonna fold your fabric in half, then to fold it in half again along your last fold. Now you should have it so that if you cut a curve along here, you would have sort of a circle when you unfolded this. But to make this circle be even more consistent, I'm going to fold the fabric one more time like this. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually cut out the hole from the waist right here. So that's just your natural waist measurement plus one. Let's call that measurement I mentioned x. Now you're going to want to take out your calculator and do this equation. Bracket x divided by pi bracket divided by two. Let's call this number measurement y. Now you're going to want to measure from this folded tip downwards with measurement y. I'm going to sort of measure a radius using that measurement. So now I have a little curve drawn right here. Now I'm gonna cut along this. I'd recommend trying to cut sort of on this side of the line. It's better to have the hole be too small than too big because you can always cut it a little bit bigger. Now earlier you decided on the length of your skirt. This line we just cut is where your waist is gonna be. Measure down from that edge the length of your skirt. It's rather faint so you can't see it particularly well, but now I have a curved line down here as well. And now I'm going to cut along this. Now you should have a big circle with a smaller circle cut out of the middle. The last thing you're going to want to do with this piece is cut it completely open. This is so that we can make the closure later. Now the only other piece you need is a waistband. For the length of the waistband, just take your waist measurement, plus a little bit extra for seam allowance, and a little bit more for some overlap for the closure. Then for the width, just decide how wide you want your waistband to be, and then add seam allowance and double it. Alrighty, let's get sewing these pieces together. I'm going to be doing this whole thing by hand, partly just because it's sort of a habit, but also I just like sewing by hand, but you could absolutely do this with a machine. So the first thing we're going to do is take our main circle skirt piece. And the slit where you cut it open in the back, you're going to want to hem along that. So I'm just going to fold this over twice and then do a straight stitch. This first step may seem unusual, but I promise it will make sense why we're doing this later. So that was the first step for the center back closure. I did it on both of the edges, but we're going to come back to that a little later. Right now we're going to sew on the waistband. For this you're going to, of course, want to take your waistband piece, fold it in half lengthwise, and then sew the raw edges right sides together with the waistline of the skirt. Keep in mind that there are a lot of different ways that you can do closures and waistbands and all that stuff. This is just how I like to do it. But with any classic circle skirt, you're going to find that this opening where your waist goes, it's going to want to stretch out quite a bit. This is because it's cut along the bias in a lot of this, meaning it's sort of slanted across the grain of the fabric. So if you just started sewing the waistband on, you'd probably find that this would just start to stretch out and it just wouldn't line up properly and the skirt will probably end up being way too big for you. So it's very, very important to pin your waistband on first or baste it. The waistband's length should be a approximately your waist measurement plus two inches. This is for a little bit of seam allowance and also for the overlap in the back of the skirt. But there's still something else I'm going to do before I start even pinning this onto the skirt. I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise with the right sides together, then sew it straight across this edge so that I can sort of flip it right side out, and then you'll have a nice clean edge right here. I'm going to do that on both ends of the waistband before I sew it on. You can see that this fabric has like an overlock stitch on the edge because it was originally a tablecloth. I'm going to trim that off where I can, but for the most part, I don't really care that much. But I 
Now that the waistband is sewn on, we're going to turn it to the inside and fell the seam allowance down. In case you don't know what felling is, it's basically where you take the seam allowance and fold it under itself, like that, and then stitch it down with a whip stitch. You can do this whole bit just by holding it in your hands, but I find it really useful to pin one end, like one end of the waistband, to like my bed or something, and then I have both of my hands free to do like the folding and the stitching. So I'm gonna get on with the felling. So here is the current skirt. Nice and swooshy, but you'll get a better view of it later. Right now we're gonna work on the closure. Right now this is just completely open, and it also has an overlap so that it can button closed. So you're gonna wanna line it up so that it's overlapped consistently all the way down. And then starting a few inches down, you're gonna start whip stitching it. This will make it so that there's an overlapped opening where you can button it up. So I'm just gonna sort of like pin the overlap to make sure that it's consistent all the way down, and then I'm gonna start stitching. <laughs> Here's what the back of the skirt looks like. Now I'm going to sew in some buttons and some buttonholes. You could also do this with hooks and eyes or snaps. You could also put a zipper in here. I just like the look of buttons. If you want a little more explanation of how to do a hand sewn buttonhole, you can look at pretty much any other one of my sewing videos. In my series, What Would the Elves Wear If They Were Real, there's a whole lot of eyelets, and hand sewn eyelets are done in a very similar process to hand sewn buttonholes. I'll probably just get like some little tiny pink or white buttons. And then all that's left after that is to hem the bottom, which I'll probably do a little bit here and there while I'm watching some Netflix or something. And for the hem, I'm just gonna do the usual little folding it over twice and then doing a straight stitch. So I'm just gonna sew on some buttons, do a little hem, and then the skirt will be done. That is how I made this 1950s circle skirt. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of variations in the way that you can make a circle skirt. You can do the closure differently, you can do an attached placket, you can do buttons like I did, or you could do a zipper, or hook and eyes, or snaps. One of the reasons why I like to use tablecloths and curtains and all that kind of stuff is because they have a really big surface area, meaning it's a lot easier to get a full circle out of it. But if you've bought your fabric or whatever you're using is a lot more narrow, you can make a circle skirt out of panels. You can cut out two half circles and sew those together, or in four pieces, or however many you need. I did also once make a circle skirt by just taking an already circular tablecloth from the thrift store and cutting out the hole for my waist. Also, if you want to heighten the 1950s silhouette even more and make it nice and floofy, you can wear this with a petticoat. I hope my instructions were easy enough to follow. I don't normally do more like tutorial type videos, but I know that circle skirts are one of those things that can be really tricky to find when you're trying to start a vintage wardrobe, so I thought it might be helpful to show you guys how to make one. Real quick before I finish off this video, I'd like to mention that I have an Etsy shop called Gwen's Vintage Box, where I'm selling vintage and antique curated boxes themed after different colors, so the link will be in the description if you want to check that out. That would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Now let's get right into the- Nyeh. How is the blender always on when I'm filming? Always. Like, I don't remember the last time I tried to film and the blender did not turn on. Bye,